Um, the, Garrett and I met the day of Game 7, and um, as I talked about, we wanted him to um, gauge his physical capabilities. We wanted, you know, I wanted to talk to him a little bit about a role if, if things turned in that way. Um, he went out, he played catch, he did his normal pregame routine, came in, said he was available. Um, at that point, we talked about him uh, pitching in a win. And as I told him, I, there's a lot at stake here, right? There's a lot at stake personally, there's a lot at stake uh, as a team. I wanted to be pretty clear with him. He'd never pitched in relief, he'd, not, he's not, he'd, he'd never pitched on two days rest. Um, and I was very aware that I wanted to be very fair to him and make sure that he, not, not only was he able to do it, but he was good. Um, once, once the game got underway in the fifth inning, I told him to go out to the bullpen. He made the dramatic walk that everybody saw. Uh, and he went out to the pen and he got up. Um, at, he was getting up on his own accord. He wanted to play catch. I think there was some nervous energy. I think he wanted to see you know, where he was. And so he wasn't ever coming into the game when he first got up. As the game progressed and we had the lead 2 nothing going into the seventh, um, and the game got underway. There were a couple, kind of couple rules that Garrett and I agreed upon. That one, he wasn't going to come in the middle of an inning, and two, he was going to pitch if we had the lead. Um, and things changed quickly in the seventh. We went from uh, getting in the middle of the inning to to losing the lead pretty quickly. Um, at that point, you know, I brought in a, a Harris. I brought in Osuna. Um, if we had regained the lead or gotten a tie, Garrett was going to go in for potentially the ninth or tenth. Um, and that never came to be. So um, the early part of the game when he was warming up was on his own. He wanted to, he wanted to throw off the mound. The latter part of, the, of it was, was kind of dictating on how the game was going to turn, and we wanted to make sure that he had ample opportunity to warm up. The debate, which I, I know and I knew going in was going to, it was the first question I got at the press conference that day, was how effective he was going to be on two days rest. Three weeks ago, I got a ton of questions about JV on three days rest um, and the debate that comes with that. So one less day, uh, I wanted to see, we had to make a decision on whether regular relievers who'd been elite during the World Series on rested guys were going to be a better option than, than Garrett. And we all know how it played out. Garrett did a tremendous job. We traded for him. We traded a lot of players to get him here, and he came here, and uh, he contributed to two very deep playoff runs and did exactly what we wanted. Um, the players have negotiated free agency as a right, and when you reach a certain point in your career, you have the option to go out and explore what's out there for you, and you know players do that, and it's their right to do it, and we support them in their opportunity to do that. Um, we clearly uh, want the best possible team that we can put together and we're going to be looking at all free agents including our own and trying to uh, to put together a team next year that can take us uh, as deeper if not deeper than we went this year so um, you know as you all know I can't talk specifically about any individual free agents um, that's not how it works but you can be rest assured that we're working hard as a front office to put together uh, to assemble the best possible team for next year fortunately we're in a situation where almost our entire lineup is back next year, uh, with the exception of our catchers, and we're going to have to work on that. Um, we still have JV and Greinke. Uh, McCullers is coming back. We have a lot of young pitchers that are going to be vying for a couple of spots, and, and we'll have an opportunity to evaluate who's out there in free agency and, and what other spots we need. We have Presley and Osuna coming back. We have James coming back. We have a, a bunch of our bullpen people, but we have lost, uh, you know, we have a few important bullpen pieces that are going to be free agents and, and we're going to have to look at how to replace those innings but you know our work is just starting we're going to go to the GM meetings in a week we're going to go to the winter meetings in December and as you know a lot of the signings don't even happen these days until February or March so we'll be working hard and keeping you up to date as much as we can and you know, we're not going to tell you blow by blow who we're talking to and what's going on that's not allowed and nor is it our style uh, but rest assured you know we got within eight outs of our goal this year and we're going to try and uh, take it the, all the way next year. What do you read into his open letter to fans? Uh, well, I retweeted it. I thought it was uh, a good letter. Um, you know, he enjoyed his time here. I think he benefited from his time here, and we certainly benefited from having 
him here. And uh, as far as trades go, um, that was that was one that I would do all over again, uh, 100 times out of 100 times. So I'm glad we did it. I'm glad he was here. And we'll see what the future holds. Well, we, you know, we've been very fortunate that uh, Jim has supported us in the moves that we've wanted to make, um, and, and he will continue to. Um, every team has limits, and uh, there's not unlimited spending potential for uh, at least most teams, um, and we're one that has limits. But uh, we have to spend wisely. That's part of front office's job, and we've done that in the past. Um, we're, we've been reaching all-time payroll highs every year for the past four or five years. And, um, and that will probably continue next year. Um, how we allocate those resources is something that we spend a lot of time thinking about um, and how we uh, commit resources for the future as well because committing resources for 2025 right now comes with a lot of risk. So we're gonna do all of that uh, analysis. We're gonna be negotiating hard to try and figure out how we use the resources we have. But I'm very satisfied as the head of baseball operations with the support that, that we've received from ownership and, and expect that con to continue. I'm so proud of, uh, first of all, of AJ. I think he's the best manager in baseball. I think he has been since we hired him in 2015. Um, hasn't gotten all the recognition he deserves, but he's done a tremendous job leading this team. I'm proud of this team. I'm proud of the front office. I'm proud of our ownership group. And as I said, we came eight outs away from our goal, which was to win our second championship. We didn't accomplish it. It was a very good Washington Nationals team, and, and they, they got it. Um, you know, we're not satisfied because we didn't reach that ultimate goal. But when we reflect and when you reflect on what happened this season, we had a historically good offensive unit on the field. We had incredible pitchers on the mound and we had a really amazing team. When you reach 107 wins during the regular season and go to a 117 uh, cumulative, you can't look back and, and be dissatisfied with that result. Uh, we'll take that result, but um, obviously it's, it, it fell short of what we ultimately wanted and what we've said we wanted from the very beginning, which is multiple championships. And we're not, we're not quite there, but we do have multiple pennants and three years in a row of winning 100 or more, three division titles in a row. And um, that's great. And it's, it's been a fun uh, time for our fans to be involved as an Astros fan, uh, but we want more. So we're, we were left a little bit unsatisfied. Yeah, I mean, to follow up, I mean, I, being honest, I, the, the emotions are still pretty raw, so I don't feel really good right now. But I think as, as time passes, as I go through, the, you know, talking to the players and, and my staff and Jeff and everybody, uh, I'm incredibly proud. I just, you know, it hurts right now because we were eight outs away from a completely different ending. 